Good afternoon, everyone. Extreme snowfall across Europe in May, damaging almost all fruit crops. This is what 80% loss of European cherry crop will look like after they thaw out, they burst, you cannot sell these. Austrian apple orchards. Austrian wine, 13% loss throughout the entire eastern region. Swiss agriculture covered in ice. Rape seed from Polish frost and insect damage. Bulgaria's biggest cherry growing region decimated. Hungary apricot, cherry, and apple orchards look like this. Frozen solid, not going to be able to sell any of this produce that's on the tree. Southern Italy, water and frost damage. Tajikistan, cherry orchards wiped out. Apricots from Spain down 30%. Total European production of apricots 16% down. Ukraine, 100% loss. Turkey, 30% loss of cherries. Palm oil on the rise in Asia. Mexico, hail damage in the millions of dollars for vegetables. USA, cherry, apple, and peaches down 30%. Add on top of this, all the heavy rains in France, and it's down 7% on its wheat production from last year. As expected, getting into the grand solar minimum, there will be global food shortages. What you're seeing right here is the very tippy tip of the iceberg of crop losses expected over the next five years. With the intensification coming at the end of this year with a lot of wipeout of corn and wheat expected, into 2017, your food price will be three to five times what it is right now. Let's take a look at the early signs that the grand solar minimum is upon us. Extreme snowfalls wiping out most of the fruit crop or large percentages across Europe, the United States, Asia in May. We'll take a look at Europe first. That extends all the way over to the Russian Federation in Ukraine, all the way down to Turkey. 80% loss of the entire European cherry crop this year in 2016 covered in ice and rain. And if you think the cherries look bad, you might as well look at what the blooms look like on the apple orchards there that did come out in the lower elevations. Apple, peach, and cherry orchards look like icicles instead of trees. Minimum 100 million euros, and that was a few weeks ago on the estimates there, and that was just for fruit orchards. That didn't include any of the wine growing. It was such a total loss that the government had to introduce a frost and snow damage insurance policy because so many Austrian insurers were unable to pay the claims out just on the fruit damage from the farmers. The headlines reading massive damage, fruit farmers, total crop failures. The government's largest amount of damage they've ever seen in fruit at one time across this region. We look into the wine growing areas in the east of the country. It should be verdant and green leaves across everything. But due to the frost, 13.7% total loss on the entire yield out of Austria this year for their wine production. Taking a look, minimum 6,000 hectares damaged. You can freeze the screen here and take a look at which region and how many hectares by which type of varietal grown. In the east of Austria, you can see where the losses are at. The vineyard's looking something like this. The areas in question and the exact percentages of loss so far. But again, this was printed two weeks ago. Just trying to do a wrap up here. The numbers would have changed by that increasing the totals. Nets are no protection against this type of deluge that's coming down. And then right away, the massive hailstorms that blanketed through the Chablis area in France also took part of the Austrian agriculture out at the same time. And add on top of the hail damaged wine vineyards, all the flooding taking place. So the French wheat crop is down seven or eight percent from last year's totals. But as the fields continue to get soggy and more reports come in, this number will definitely increase. Taking a look at Western Bulgaria, the area in gray is where they grow the most cherries in the country, generally producing 37,000 tons, but they're looking around 6,000 tons right now. Also plums, apricots, and peaches, all damaged. And to back up the prediction of food price rises, last year, 1.5, this year, 6. 
That's nearly a five times increase just on the fruit prices in Bulgaria. The totals coming out in early May are 80 to 100 percent loss. Volcanic eruptions, don't forget those affecting agriculture, just a ping on Costa Rica here, Nicaragua experiencing the same, and there's 42 volcanoes erupting currently on this planet. You can understand how some of the volcanic ash could act as nuclei to produce rain showers. Anywhere the volcanic ash is falling, the animals cannot graze, and it will affect crop production gradually across the planet. Mexico, hail damage to zucchini and onions in the millions of U.S. dollars. Back to the damage in Germany and Switzerland, Croatia. This is what Swiss agriculture was experiencing. European rapeseed, Germany and Polish frost killed off part of the crop. Down at least a million tons in production, minimum. These are the net solutions that just didn't work throughout the central regions of Europe. It was just too heavy with the snow and ice and collapsed everything. Hungary, 30% loss of its apricot. A view of the frost damage across the country. Minimum another 76 million euro in this country. So what's that bring us up to? Almost 200 million euro in two countries. Frost damage was immense, at least 30%. This is what the fruit looks like. Frozen on the trees. Let's go to southern Italy. And you have to think to yourself, no, it couldn't have had frost damage in southern Italy. Yes, it did, along with rain. So this is what the cherries look like after they were frost damaged and then rained on, split open, unsellable. Close up here for you. This is what the hails look like raining down. That's the depth of the hail that pummeled the orchards and left damage in its wake. Now, if you thought the European frosts were a little strange, let's jump right over into Russia here. They had a foot and a half of snow right on the border with China. The area in red in question closed highways and roads. In the Mogochinsky district, right in the area where the three rivers come together, Average temperature should be around 26 or so degrees. Beautiful area, forested, but they had so much snow that highways were closed. Let's jump over into Spain. Stone fruit, another name for those uh, fruits that have incredibly hard pits like plums, apricots. Rains, damage production, down 30%. But if we look at the total throughout Europe, the entire European total is down 16% at the minimum for the apricot harvest. Now this is, again, the early damage totals that were coming in through the middle of May until the last week of May. Now we don't have the updated totals, but with all the rains, hail, etc. that swept through Europe in the last seven days, these numbers should be increasing as well. Spain cherries down 80%. There's a specific Bajo cherry that lost 80%. That's a specialty grade agriculture product there. So normal production, 80% down in Spain. Let's take a look at Tajikistan. Cherry orchard decimated. Swiss fruit farmers taking the same approach to heat what's growing above ground as the Austrians did when they lit up fires to protect their wine vineyards. The same ghostly look throughout the landscape. This is what Swiss farmers were doing to prepare their apricot trees against frost damage. But this is what the Swiss vineyards look like. Oh, the nets just didn't work when they tried to protect their crops. So going forward, these protection measures of using nets will no longer be viable. We're going to have to switch to different agricultural methods to protect our crops from now on. And this is what I mean about growing techniques are going to need to radically change and in the fastest Manhattan style worldwide collaborative project i don't care what government you're from what nationality you are but we are going to have to work together as a species to start quickly revamping our growing techniques so there will be enough food for all of us on this planet and it is started there's no starting it's started it's in play it's going to rapidly decrease in temperature this fall with the sunspot drop off and into next year with the la nina you are going to see something that is going to make you shake your head and say that is impossible. But the impossible will suddenly be possible. And you will be questioning how you could have believed global warming all of these years. Back into Switzerland. This is an area border between the vineyards and the fruit orchards. But they say use the same technique 
lighting fires between the trees. And this is just an otherworldly image here coming out. That's an entire countryside they're trying to warm up. Turkey, 30% cherry loss. Ukraine, 100% losses in apricots, as well as cherry damages. Okay, so it was 4 to 6 C below zero in May. Now that is around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So that last week of April and first weeks of May, those are extremely low temperatures, which would be expected because in the Lamander minimum in the 1600s, they had to move the wine growing regions from where we currently grow wine way further south into Spain. And if you thought Europe and maybe a bit of Asia experienced cold temperatures and crop losses, let's move over to the United States. Significant losses of fruit crops across the U.S. Cherries reduced by 50% through California. This would also be neighboring areas where they do grow fruit because as you saw those heavy windstorms, rainstorms, snowstorms that came through and it's still snowing in the mountains. Bing cherry crop dropping from 18 million boxes down to 1 million boxes. That is such a heavy loss. That's almost an entire wipe out of the industry in itself. Peach crop in Connecticut, that's the northeast states that experienced record snow and record cold in May. That was 15 times the normal, 7 times the record from the previous records. And you can see how hail damage, this includes the southern states around Utah, getting down near the border with Mexico, Texas, back up and around New York. Apple orchards snowed on when they were not expecting that at all. Vineyard losses across the U.S. Blueberries took a severe beating after they bloomed and then got flash frozen and then tried to bloom again. Asian palm oil on the rise. It should alleviate when La Nina starts and they get a bit more rainfall. But Australia itself, hail damage, hail damage, hail damage. All through the wheat growing regions, just stripping everything. I'm betting more than a 5 to 7% loss overall in Australia's wheat crop this year due to the cold, the wet, and the hail. This is some intense hail that came down in Myanmar. Look at the size of that. That's Southeast Asia way down near the equator. And if we're using a proxy and the baseline is the known fact of what a grand solar minimum does and what the expected outcomes of a grand solar minimum would be based on historical records and written accounts of how the weather changed. You know, the Thames River froze and they had frost fairs in the UK. Over in the, over in the US, colonies barely survived. And once you know that, that that's what we're repeating and we're going into right now, when you see that the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the AMO, is going on its cool phase for the next 30 years dropping in temperature across the North Atlantic and the Pacific temperatures are dropping like a rock most recorded in history ever the steepest drop off so that'll take the Pacific into a cold phase at the same time the sunspot has actually gone down to zero for the last two days so that is a straight drop off a cliff down to zero you have all these factors on top of each other and you can see why the weather's not what it should be, why it's getting cold. And you know, the snow is probably going to start in September this year. It's going to get extremely cold. When we look back in history and you start to see these zero sunspot months that are not on the regular pattern of the 11 year cycle, we look right around early 1800s. So at the very minimum, we're going to go back 200 years in cold temperature. And if we look at the amplitude wave, you can see that we are going to be right around that same sunspotless area at the very minimum, 200 year cold, 200 year floods, get ready for it, expect it. And the paper released last year by Professor Valentina Zarkova talked about how the different dynamo layers in the sun would have an opposite rotational and one would slow down so fast that it would create such a disturbance in the oscillation on the sun. And then we suddenly get this polar magnetic field strength diverging so far across. And I wonder why, with this data information instantly available at our fingertips, this chart's still a year and a half behind. And I wonder now how far the red line, the southern hemisphere, has diverged from the blue line in the northern hemisphere. But that information just seems to still not be available, and I wonder why.
cycles of time. Look at the past to predict the future. It's a cycle. It comes around every 400 years. We're back into it. The intensity of the cold is unknown. It could be a 1200 year cold. It could be something from the 1200 era, which would put us in the 800 year cold. We could go back to the 1600s, which put us right in that 400 era. So far, we're getting and creeping right into the 200 year cold records along with snow and ice. And you can expect it to intensify when the sunspots really drop out here, going forward into the end of the year and the two oceans get cold, you'll understand that man is not responsible for the warming or the changes or anything on this planet that is a natural cycle. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing we can do to stop this. But it can be survived if you're prepared and if you work with your communities and if you have a plan to grow food and organize with other people on how to get through this. So many people write me and say, how can I survive this? It can be survived. It's always been survived. I mean, 75% of the people survived during the Maunder Minimum. 90% of the people survived during the Dalton Minimum. So it's just about you getting ready mentally, spiritually, physically, and surrounding yourself with good people that you can trust so you can get things done and still maintain some comfort in your lives so you can thrive and come out on the other side of this. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you do like this type of information, I'd like to continue reporting on agricultural losses, different kind of records, and give some forecasting in where it might get cold and rainy. So please jump over to my channel on Patreon. You can support my work there and I'll keep this information coming to you.